Everything was going so well for Emperor Jean Bedel Bokassa I, until he decided to do something special for the children of his Central African Empire, formerly the Central African Republic. One thing His Imperial Majesty Bokassa knew something about was clothes. He was extremely fastidious about how he looked and always dressed the part, usually in gold brocade uniforms, festooned with medals and often wrapped in a cape of eagle feathers. Bacasa's 1977 lavish coronation ceremony in Bangui, his capital city, consumed more than a third of his country's annual budget and all of France's aid money for that year. The celebration was billed as Africa's event of the century. It featured the well-dressed emperor sporting a 32-pound robe embroidered with 700,000 pearls as he placed a diamond-studded crown fashioned by a Paris jeweler on his own head. He posed proudly on a two-ton gold throne carved in the shape of an eagle with spread wings, walked on a path of 26,000 freshly cut flowers flown in from France on a jetliner that morning, and sliced the first piece of an eight-foot-high cake prepared by a baker in Nice. So what could he now do for his empire's children? He had it. They needed to look smart so he decreed that he would make them uniforms. Well, even an emperor knows uniforms don't grow on trees, so he decided to build a school uniform factory to manufacture them. And since it was his idea, and he was the emperor, of course he owned it. Well, technically, one of his many wives owned it, but you get the picture. The handsome factory was soon completed, and the design of the uniforms was personally approved by his majesty. They carried his own beaming image prominently displayed on the front of each uniform. The emperor conducted grand opening ceremonies at the modern factory, complete with banners and long speeches, entertainment and lots of waving from expensive cars. So, at long last, manufacturing commenced and nationwide distribution began. But unfortunately, almost immediately, there was a problem the uniforms weren't selling. How could this be? Well, the average outfit that the sparkling factory turned out cost $100, and the average family in this second poorest country in Africa earned about $150 a year, so they were understandably reluctant to purchase the uniforms. The emperor was livid. How dare those school children refuse his uniforms? This was unacceptable. He would not permit his students to look ragged when perfectly good uniforms were available. So, Bokassa passed a law. When your imperial majesty and emperor for life, passing laws is pretty easy. The regulation made it mandatory that all school children wear his company's uniforms or they could not attend school. Once the law was implemented, student protests began throughout the cities, everywhere there were schools. Large numbers of elementary school students marched right in the emperor's own capital city. The emperor was annoyed when his Rolls Royce was slowed by the unrest in the streets, but he became enraged when rocks were thrown at his car. Enough was enough. He ordered the insolent children clubbed arrested, dispersed, and shot. Over a hundred children between the ages of eight and 16 died during the unrest, many of them beaten to death in prison cells by guards, and, according to later testimony, some by His Imperial Majesty Bokassa himself with his ebony walking stick. The massive worldwide press coverage following the deaths of the students opened the way for French special forces to invade the Central African Empire and restore former President David Daco to power, while Bokassa, now just another man, fled into exile.